Throughout the history of heavy metal, there have been many feuds between bands that escalated to physical confrontations. Let's take a look at some of the most intense rivalries that ended in violence. Make sure you watch until the end of the video to find out which conflict ended in a gruesome and disturbing murder. Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose and Motley Crue vocalist Vince Neil were embroiled in one of the most infamous feuds in rock history. It all began at the 1989 MTV Video Music Awards, where Motley Crue presented Guns N' Roses with the Best Metal Video Award for Sweet Child O' Mine. The event suddenly took a violent turn after Neil punched GNR rhythm guitarist Izzy Stradlin backstage. Allegedly, Stradlin had hit Neil's pregnant wife at the Cat House Club in Los Angeles a few weeks prior, and Vince was looking for revenge. In Motley Crue's autobiography, The Dirt, Vince Neil would recount, When Izzy walked off stage, I was waiting for him. You hit my wife. All my blood rushed into my fist, and I decked him. I decked him good. That's when Axl Rose rushed to the defense of his bandmate, yelling, I'm going to kill you at Vince Neil. Neil's bodyguards were able to quickly defuse the situation and stop any more punches from being thrown. However, this confrontation would ultimately launch a media frenzy that would be remembered for years to come. Following the incident, Vince Neil would brag to Kerrang! magazine that he broke Izzy Stradlin's nose, which led to Axel demanding a public apology from Neil for supposedly lying in his interview. Rose later challenged Neil to a fight in the press. I put in a magazine you know, anytime he wants it, anywhere, Atlantic City, I don't care. We'll put money on it, you know. I don't care, you know. And then he tried to turn it around and say the same thing. But, you know, the invitation's there. I'm easy to find. Neil responded by issuing a challenge to Rose via a public statement on MTV. Axel, if you're watching this, I want to challenge you to a fight. I'm going to give you the time, and I'm going to give you the place, and there's no backing out now, buddy and it's time to put up or shut up. As the hype around the fight continued to grow, so did the animosity between the two singers. Neil would even suggest that the fight be held in an arena and televised to the world. Despite the war of words, a match between the two never came to fruition. Sebastian Bach's career began in 1987, when he was discovered singing at rock photographer Mark Weiss's wedding by John Bon Jovi's parents, who subsequently helped him land a gig as the lead singer for the band Skid Row. Only two years later, Skid Row opened for Bon Jovi on their 1989 headlining tour, but the relationship between the two bands soured after Skid Row's t-shirts began outselling Bon Jovi's. Bon Jovi's crew would haze Sebastian Bach at the tour stop in Kentucky. Lights are out and I feel about six dudes just grab me, I don't know what's going on, and just dunk my head and hold me under in a vat of like freezing cold ice milk. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be up there for the first verse and I'm under the stage. And you know when you jump into water, it's too cold, you get that vertigo? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I run up there in the pants going, what are you doing? <laughs> and I got milk all over me. Following Skid Row's performance, a mob led by John Bon Jovi began to aggressively approach Bach. An enraged Bon Jovi would say, I heard what you said on my stage, mother effort, before throwing a punch that Bach narrowly avoided. That's when Bon Jovi's crew grabbed Bach and hurled him against a concrete wall. Bon Jovi's brother and father would also join the scuffle, with Bon Jovi Sr. screaming, I'll effing kill you in Bach's face. The feud would continue over the years with Bach and Bon Jovi trading insults in the press, until a fateful chance encounter in a London bar led to the two patching things up. In the early 2000s, Slipknot and Mushroomhead had a well-known feud that led to an all-out war between the two masked bands. Mushroomhead would often criticize Slipknot in interviews, claiming that they copied their style and were manufactured by Roadrunner Records trying to profit from Mushroomhead's ideas. Their fans came down and basically threw everything but rocks at us. You know what I'm saying? They hit Paul in the face with a fucking padlock the size of my fist. This is while we're on stage. Slipknot bassist Paul Gray would give his own account of the incident to Revolver magazine, stating, Me and Jim jumped off stage and took our masks off and started swinging at people at the end of one song. When we were done with that set, everything came off. One of the guys in our crew got maced by the cops and arrested. Law enforcement would struggle to break up the brawl between the members of Slipknot and Mushroomhead fans in the audience, resulting in several arrests. Their rivalry would continue over the years as a one-sided affair, with Slipknot choosing to take the more diplomatic approach of ignoring Mushroomhead completely, while Mushroomhead continued throwing jabs at Slipknot in their interviews. The feud came to an end in 2010, as Mushroomhead publicly sent their condolences to Slipknot after the tragic death of Paul Gray.
Former Metallica guitarist Dave Mustaine was fired from the band not once, but twice, with the first dismissal coming after a physical altercation wherein Mustaine brought his dog to band practice. The dog jumped onto the car of then-Metallica bassist Ron McGovney and scratched the paint. Metallica lead singer James Hetfield allegedly yelled at the dog and then kicked it in a fit of rage, which provoked Mustaine into physically attacking Hetfield and punching him in the face. I've been doing martial art ever since I was a kid and I beat James up because he kicked my dog. He kicked, he kicked my dog. Mustaine cites this incident as the root of why he permanently lost his job in Metallica. Mustaine went on to form the well-known metal band Megadeth. However, despite his post-Metallica success, he remained hurt and bitter, often lashing out in the press. In a 2004 interview with Canada's Chart Attack, Mustaine would absolutely blast James Hetfield in a series of scathing remarks. In the beginning of the band, he just sang, and I did all the guitar work. When he was done singing, he'd walk away from the microphone, and I had to walk up to the mic and talk. In a 2022 interview with Guitar.com, Mustaine would reveal that he and Hetfield were very close to forming a new band together. That is, until an argument arose between the two regarding who deserves writing credit for Metallica's 1982 demo. The two have not spoken to one another since. New metal veterans Disturbed and California post-hardcore band Finch would be embroiled in a violent rivalry that would ultimately culminate in an explosive physical altercation. It all started in 2002, when Finch guitarist Randy Strohmeyer made disparaging comments about Disturbed's music and even threatened to kill lead singer David Draymond. I'd shoot him in the effing head, he told Mean Street Magazine. I'd rip his stupid little piercings out. They're just cheesy. It bums me out because their music is terrible. Hopefully all that music will die out soon. The feud turned violent when the two bands performed together at the 2004 Rolling Rock Town Fair in Pennsylvania. As the revolving stage rotated to reveal Finch preparing for their set, disturbed guitarist Dan Donegan approached Finch guitarist Randy Strohmeyer, and a scuffle erupted. As Strohmeyer's bandmates and their crew came to his aid, witnesses said, disturbed singer David Draymond and their manager entered the fray, and fists began to fly. Finch would resume their performance following the altercation, but disturbed, their crew, and members of Seven Dust, who were also on the bill, were waiting to ambush them back stage. Finch were escorted off the premises by the event's security team to prevent further incident. Disturbed guitarist Dan Donegan would succinctly describe the reason the fight took place, stating, I've seen some posts trying to twist the whole thing into a new East Coast versus West Coast emo versus metal thing. Just to clarify, this has nothing to do with any of that. This is a simple lesson learned in life that there's consequences to your actions. The animosity between Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee and Kid Rock stems from their shared ex-wife, Pamela Anderson. Lee was married to Anderson from 1995 to 1998, while Kid Rock was married to Anderson for five months in 2006. Their hatred for each other had been steadily building over the years until it ended in a fist fight at the 1997 MTV Video Music Awards. A source reported that Lee was sitting with magician Chris Angel when the two went to visit Diddy, who was sitting close to Kid Rock. That's when Rock reportedly sucker punched Lee in his back. The two were pulled apart and subsequently escorted out of the event. An eyewitness reported to TMZ that Tommy, quote, got it pretty bad. When a situation happens like happened at the VMAs, a situation like with Tommy Lee and your son asked you, do you explain it to him? What does he think of those situations and how do you, well, how I do you explain, explain it to him? him? I told him, you know, very, very honestly and very clearly. I said, I won. <laughs> According to a spokesperson for the Las Vegas Police Department, Rock was cited for misdemeanor battery for his assault on Lee. Many speculated that the two were fighting over their ex. However, Kid Rock denied these rumors, saying he no longer wishes to be associated with Anderson and that divorcing her was the best thing he ever did. Rock later revealed that Lee's complete and utter disrespect towards him throughout the years was the reason for their brawl. The last contact I had with Tommy was when me and Pam were going through our divorce, Rock recalled. He picked up her black Blackberry and started emailing me a lot of horrendous things. It was extremely disrespectful. After their VMA altercation, Lee and Rock were offered a hefty sum of $1 million to face off in a celebrity boxing match. However, the two decided against it. In 2006, Fear Factory guitarist Dino Cazares recruited Tommy Vex to front his new band, Divine Heresy. But just as it seemed as if the band would become the next big thing in metal, an onstage brawl between Vex and Cazares would bring Divine Heresy's rise to a screeching halt. During a 2008 performance, Vex would try to force the band to end their set early and told the crowd that they only had time for one last song. The rest of the band, however, did not agree with Vex's decision and chose to continue playing. Vex then began screaming 
screaming at Dino and argued with him before he pushed Dino across the stage. The entire band then made the mutual decision to immediately fire Vexed from Divine Heresy. In his first public statement following the incident, Vexed would say, I've been, you know, suffering the indignities of Dino's massive ego for as long as I've worked with him. And unfortunately, everything, you know, I've heard about him had had eventually come to fruition. Later that year, Tommy Vext would join the band Snot as their new lead vocalist. According to Vext, Dino then tried to sabotage the singer's career, going as far as to contact the band and urge them not to hire him. The feud would only continue to escalate as Dino and Tommy came face to face at the 2008 Mayhem Fest and once again engage in a physical altercation. Dino would recall, no words were said, nothing. He hit me and the one thing I could do was cover myself up to protect myself. I just put my hands up and he kept swinging at me. Dino's wife would take to her MySpace blog to add to the story, where in a post titled Tommy Vexed Beats a Girl, Please Read, she would reveal that she too was struck by Vexed, as well as sharing photos of her and Dino's injuries. A casual audition session between Eddie Van Halen and Limp Bizkit frontman Fred Durst reportedly ended with the legendary guitarist putting a gun to Durst's head. According to video director Andrew Bennett, a record label executive introduced Durst and Van Halen to one another at a party and even suggested that they work together. The two agreed to meet up for a jam session, with Durst saying, That would be hilarious. The greatest guitar player ever plays with the worst band ever. Van Halen would describe the audition as, quote, like being a scholar amongst kindergarten and abruptly fled when people began smoking cannabis, which Van Halen was not fond of, leaving behind his guitars and amps. Van Halen would then make several attempts to get in touch with Durst in order to recover his gear. After not hearing back from Durst for 24 hours, Van Halen decided to take matters into his own hands. Fred answered the door, Bennett remembers Van Halen saying, I put my gun to that stupid effing red hat of his, and I said, where's my stuff, mother effer? That guy just turned to one of his employees and starts yelling at him to grab my stuff. Eddie then allegedly stood by, holding his gun up to Durst's head as he went back and forth loading Van Halen's equipment into his car. Guitarist John Five joined Marilyn Manson's band in 1998 and quickly became one of his most important collaborators. Manson is even credited with giving him the stage name of John Five. However, despite their musical chemistry, tensions between them ran high and eventually led to an incident that shocked metal fans everywhere. John Five would describe his tenure in Manson's band as five years of strained relations, in which the singer frequently verbally abused him, trashed his dressing room, and relentlessly hazed him. Since the day I joined, it was like being in Full Metal Jacket. John Five said, Being on stage with Marilyn Manson is like being in a war zone. You never know when he's going to freak out and throw something at you. His time with Manson came to a boiling point in 2003, when both musicians got into an onstage altercation at the Rock M Ring Festival. Manson was moving across the stage when he hit John Five's guitar and chest with his boot. John Five was outraged and threw his guitar down while screaming at Manson, with the two nearly coming to blows in front of tens of thousands of fans. Five would later explain that, at the time, he was still mourning the unexpected death of his sister, and Manson's onstage bullying of him caused him to snap. He would leave Manson's band the following year, and went on to join forces with another one of Manson's rivals, Rob Zombie. John Five currently serves as the lead guitarist for Motley Crue. Following a series of church burnings, Norwegian black metal musicians Varg Vikernes and Euronymous would present themselves as the leaders of a militant, cult-like group of satanic terrorists in the March 1993 issue of Kerrang! magazine. However, after some months, the two friends developed hostility towards each other, which led to a rift between them. Financial disputes would also rise when Euronymous owed Vikernes a significant amount of royalty payments. Their rivalry would culminate on August 10th, 1993, when Vikernes stabbed Euronymous to death during a confrontation at his apartment in Oslo. Euronymous was found outside the apartment with 23 wounds, 2 to the head, 5 to the neck, and 16 to the back. Vikernes would later claim that he killed Euronymous in self-defense, claiming that Euronymous had plotted to stun him with an electroshock weapon, tie him up, and torture him to death while videotaping the event. Vikernes was arrested on August 19th, 1993. The police found 150 kilograms of explosives and 3,000 rounds of ammunition in his home. Vikernes was ultimately sentenced to 21 years in prison for the murder of Euronymous, the arson of four churches, and for possession of explosives, the maximum penalty you can get in Norway. Varg Vikernes is not the only metal musician who has been sentenced to jail time for his crimes. To watch our video about some of the most shocking crimes committed by metal musicians, click here now. Warning, this video will disturb you.